social isolation. So person will withdraw himself from others because he doesn't want to mingle with the others because he wanted to hide his incapability. So this is what is all about the middle stage. This lasts about two to twelve years, and then we will move to the the final stage. Final stage, uh, which lasts about one year, and uh, mostly the patient uh, hardly they reach the final stage, and if at all they reach to this final stage, and uh, here. The thing here, what we can see here is there is a severe weight loss, severe weight loss here because that uh, the person will not be able to uh, even the take his food, uh, that swallowing capacity will also go away, and uh, then no communication at all, no communication at all. The person will not be able to communicate because that area of communication. Is also being affected here. The person neither he can tell anything to others, or nor he will be able to listen to uh, listen and understand others. So this is what no communication. A uh, total there is a loss of communication with other people. Then uh, next is does not recognize the family member. Here in the final stage, the person will be like strangers to others. Or, or even the family members look like stranger to the person because even the person uh, is not able to identify his wife, children, their names, and all. Okay, so the person will be like totally the stranger to even the family members. And uh, the next one is incontinence of urine and the feces can be seen. Uh, that uh, capacity also the person uses. Mm, then even the person cannot stand and walk. Uh, he will be like a bad reader. Uh, that capability also he uses as uh, the part of the brain which is responsible for all these activities also included there. And uh, ultimately uh, there is a death. Okay, death of the person. Mostly we see in case of dementia, the death can occur due to the aspiration. Okay, so this is all about the uh, the stages of uh, dementia, and this is about the final stage. And uh, these are the three stages of dementia: that is, earlier uh, stage, middle stage, and the final stage. Clinical features. Clinical features. If we will see the uh, features in the person, clinical features. Uh, the dementic patient. The first thing is about the personality changes. Personality changes. So this is the first thing what we can observe in the person of dementia, like personality changes. The person will not be like earlier. Uh, personality changes here. The person become more hostile. The poor person become more aggressive here. Okay, aggressive, irritable, and explosive. Okay, uh, he becomes so much aggressive, irritable, and explosive. Uh, if we if we see any dementic patient, we cannot never we can see he is a very happy person. He will be always depressed and uh, anxious person. So that personality changes will be there. Then mood and mood changes. Mood changes. Always the dementic patient will be having mood swings. And mostly uh, the 40 to 50 percent is of the patient they do suffer from. Uh, some kind of depression and anxiety. As anxiety is commonly is common symptoms of any of the psychiatric disorder. Here, the person will be much more depressive. Okay, so 40 to 50 percentage of patients they have mood swings or changes. Then we have the memory impairment. So this is the main thing about the person uh, dementia. The main thing is memory impairment. Memory impairment in earlier stages we can see the person. Like uh, immediate, uh, in earlier stages we can see immediate and recent memory will be affected, and as the disease progresses, all these immediate, recent, as well as the remote memory is also being affected. Uh, that is about the memory impairment, then cognitive changes. Cognitive, the person will be disoriented to the time. The uh, time, place, and the person. The per huh? here, the uh, the person will be disoriented to time, place, and 
the person, then abstract thinking will not be there. That is logical thinking and poor judgment. The person will not be able to take uh, take decision about himself. So we sh uh, we should never allow the any dementic patient to decide about about himself or he, never allow him to take any decision about himself. Then uh, neurological changes we can see uh, the three A's that is aphasia, apraxia, and agnosia. We can see uh, aphasia is the lack of speech. Apraxia is uh, uh, lack of body movement and agnosia is the person will not be able to perceive the thing normally as we do here though the person's uh, all the uh, function all the sense organs are working properly even though the person will not be able to perceive the thing that is agnosia and most often we what we can see here is stereotype behavior Stereotype behavior commonly seen in a dementic patient. The, uh, the person will be doing the similar activities again and again because he is comfortable in doing such uh, activities, repeated activities, because he is not capable of doing some other activities. So he will be comfortable in, in doing the same activity. So this is uh, about the stereotype behavior. Then thinking. Thinking definitely the thinking will be slow here, reduced here. Then insight, poor insight. The uh, the dementic patient is uh, exactly he is not aware that he is suffering from uh, such a disorder. Okay, uh, poor lack of insight we can be seeing. And another uh, the thing what we can see is catastrophic reaction we call it as or catastrophic changes we can see in the dementic patient more often we. Uh, here, when we talk about the patient or we uh, ask the patient to do some of the activity, activities, the person, because he is aware that he is not capable of doing such activities, what the person will do, he will try to distract other uh, by uh, showing some changes, like suddenly he will become hanger or he will show uh, the tears in his eyes or uh, either what he will do, he will try to change the topic by cracking the jokes and all. So this is what it is called as a catastrophic reaction because he wanted to hide his incapabilities. So this is what it is uh, called as catastrophic changes. And then we have sundowner syndrome. Sundowner syndrome, sundowner is as the sun sets down, okay, so, uh, like earlier morning and the late evening, the symptoms, whatever symptoms are there, they become aggravated here, aggravated. And uh, uh, here you can see uh, the confusion increases, there will be the ataxia, drowsiness, all these can be more early morning and the late evening. Okay, so there is some down syndrome and we have hallucination and delusion. These patients, they do have hallucination and delusions of various kinds like 20 to 30 percentage of the patient, they do suffer from hallucinations of any type, mostly the auditory type, and 30 to 40 percentage of the patient, they do suffer from delusions, mostly the delusion is of persecutory, persecutory or we call it as a paranoid or suspiciousness in simple language. So these are the uh, hallucinations, 20 to 30 percent hallucination and 30 to 40 percent is of the patient they will suffer from different kinds of delusion most commonly the perspiratory delusion so this is uh, so these are all about the uh, the clinical uh, features what you can see in the dementic patients moving ahead uh, the diagnosis of dementia how do we diagnose the patient with dementia so, uh, in, uh, in mental health nursing, what we do is, the first thing is about a detailed collection of history. It's very, very important here. We do collect the history from the patient. If the patient is not in some mind uh, of giving the history, then we collect it from the uh, family members uh, or some other sources. So, a detailed history is what is needed to find out the cause. Then 
or many uh, then we do the mental status examination. Mental status examination can uh, we have to do to the patient uh, to do uh, to rule out this dementia. If mental status examination is not possible, then many mental status examination can do. Okay, where only we will be having a few questions directly we will ask in the patient and we can uh, conclude the thing, which takes less time. So uh, mainly mental status or else mini mental status examination can be done. And other lab investigations, other lab investigations uh, uh, like, like even MRI we are doing, MRI and then uh, beta amyloid deposits. Spinal fluid can be collected to find out these beta amyloid deposits which can be seen in the dementic patients, spinal fluid. So we will be searching for these beta amyloid deposits and uh, even with the help of DSM-4 uh, criteria, uh, uh, we can diagnose a patient with this dementia. So this is what uh, the basically the most important one is the history and the mental status examination. So this is the diagnostic criteria uh, to diagnose a patient with a dementia and it says that uh, there should be a multiple cognitive defect as we have seen in the definition there will be the decline in the cognitive functions and here the first thing is about the memory impairment. Memory impairment is the first thing and along with that all these uh, these things, any of the one uh, can do to diagnose a patient that is aphasia, apraxia, agnosia and the disturbances in activity function. Any two of these are there, then we can uh, diagnose, uh, then it will be helpful to make us to diagnose a patient with the Alzheimer's. Coming to the next one is uh, like along with this, uh, not only this, but it should interfere, on, always we say, it should interfere in the person's social and occupational life. Okay, all these changes in the mental health functioning or memory loss and all, they, uh, they should interfere in the social and the occupational life. Then only it will be considered as a psychiatric disorder. Okay, and then uh, there will be uh, and all these disturbances should be there in the patient for at least uh, six months. Okay, so this should interfere in the person's life for at least six months. Then we can it will be easy to diagnose a patient with a dementia. So this is all about uh, how to diagnose a patient with a dementia. Then the course and the prognosis. Uh, and the treatment, slow progress, uh, progression of the memory impairment, okay. So all, as I said, first immediate memory, recent and remote memory, all are, uh, all types of memory are included here. There is a progression of memory loss. The mean survival year is almost seven years from the age of onset of the disease itself. And there is no, currently there is no prevention and cure for the disorder. We cannot even prevent it. There will be the progression of this. So this is about the post progression and the treatment and coming to the management of dementia. How can we manage these dementic patients? So this dementia can be managed uh, with the treatable causes. So whatever treatable causes are there, as I said, if reversible and irreversible, whatever reversible causes or treatable causes are there, find out the root cause of that and then Give the treatment, we can uh, we can reverse it back to some extent, and some of the medications can also be helpful. Uh, these medications are given abroad, and uh, these are actually hydrochloride and lunipizil, and these drugs are not to improve the memory of the person, uh, but these uh, drugs will improve the acetylcholine level in the person's. Um, brain which will somewhat help the patient. Okay, so these are the two medications and uh, uh, then psychosocial. In psychosocial we have different uh, things like uh, home care, day care, inpatient care, residential care. All these uh, facilities are available uh, where care can be taken for a dementic patient and uh, 
uh, another thing, important thing, what we have to keep in the mind is about the driving. Driving should not be allowed to the patient. Uh, in, uh, in abroad countries and all, they, if the patient is suffering from in dementia and all, they, uh, uh, the driving is not allowed for them. So, and about the, uh, so here you can see in this slide, so this is the person on the way off of this person, the name is given like Alzheimer's disease. So, Alzheimer's disease, uh, in psychiatry we call it as dementia, both are the same one and this is the person on the way on behalf of this person, the, this is has got its name and it was the person, uh, the name was like Alois Alzheimer's and he discovered this in. 1907, uh, 1907, and what he did was he tried to find out the molecular basis of amyloid deposits. And he found out the amyloid deposits, and these amyloid deposits are seen in the brain and the uh, cells of the person. And on this, uh, the disease has got its name. Uh, then if you see pathologically, uh, some changes can be seen in the person's structure of uh, the brain. And uh, here uh, we have uh, like diffuse atrophy, or especially of frontal lobe, parietal and temporal lobes, flattened sulci will be there, and large cerebral ventricles. And microscopically, if we will see, we can find out the same. Nice that you commonly amyloid deposit. This is what I was talking about. This is what it is controlled by the alloys and the alzheimer's and neurofibrillary candle. So, like structures can be seen, and neuronal losses will be there in the brain of the person. So, all these are the microscopic uh, findings what we can see in the uh, person's brain. These changes we can commonly see in the person. And here in this picture, uh, let me clear you. Uh, here in this side, you can see uh, the person is having the normal uh, healthy brain, and this is what you can see the changes with all those changes. The, it, uh, the brain has shrunken because of that neuronal losses. So, this is what you can uh, the brain look like of healthy and Alzheimer's type. And here you can see the, the thread like structures. Uh, that is neurofibrillary candles, and these are the dead neurons. We call it uh, them as a senile plug tubes. Okay, this is what we can see uh, to make it more clear. And then uh, about the nursing care, uh, how do we care the patient with the dementia? And uh, let me tell you, in the nursing care, uh, we can. Uh, what the thing is that uh, because. This, uh, this is of course in the old age. Uh, here, when we are taking care, nursing care of the patient, uh, we have to give total care to the patient. So, uh, since from getting up from the bed till he goes to the bed, everything has to be done for the patient. And here, the first thing is about the daily routine. Uh, we have to make a strict timetable for the patient. Timetable for the patient. So, uh, everything will be uh, everything will be fixed. Okay, all the activities are on a particular time. Okay, so time table we have to follow to the patient so that the patient is aware of what he is going to do next. Okay, and special care to be taken about the Sandano syndrome means early morning and the late evening. And uh, this is what about the strict time table. And along with this, we should have we have to orient the patient about the time, place, and the person. Okay, uh, always we have to tell him about the time. If anyone comes to meet the patient, we have to orient you to him also. And about the uh, the patient should be aware of the date and all because for this we need to have separate calendar in his room with one date on one calendar. Then uh, provide a newspaper to the paper uh, to the pa uh, to the patient so that it can create some uh, some. Uh, enjoyment in the person so that we will be aware of whatever things is happening around him and uh, orientation to the time place and the person then coming to the that is about the daily routine the nutrition and body weight in nutrition and body weight uh, 
uh, we have to provide a well balanced diet. Nothing much is required, but a well balanced diet. Allow plenty of time to have the meals as there will be the problem with the animal feed. So we have to provide them uh, plenty of time to have. And then uh, food, whatever food we are serving to the patient, uh, the food should not be too hot or too cold because that uh, sense of understanding that also uh, has gone away. And uh, we have to keep a special consideration about the medical illnesses in the old age, according to their medical illnesses, we have to do diet modifications and semi-solid diets are the most preferred diet for the uh, dementia patients. So this, this is about the diets and the next one is the personal hygiene. Uh, regarding the personal hygiene, as I said, you, the dementia patient is not able to take care of himself. Here in these slides, you can see the nurse are helping the patient in doing various activities of daily living like bathing, brushing and all, everything has to be done for the patient according to their level of dependence. Coming to the next, private habits and incontinence. So this is one of the problem with the old age and if it is dementic, dementic patient, this is uh, we have to be special concern with this one. And for this also we have to maintain a rigid timetable for private habits. And prostate problem is one of the problem of the old age people. We have to take care of this as well. Uh, then uh, constipation also because of uh, these restricted activities in dementia. The patient they develop this constipation even in the old age. So we have to give all these fiber-rich diets. Fiber-rich diets with active and passive exercise can do to solve that problem. Uh, then accidents, accidents are common in old age and if the patient is dementic, these are too, uh, too common and here uh, accident commonly seen by uh, when the patient get, gets tripping over the furniture, uh, falling down from the staircases, sleeping in the bathroom and all. So uh, to avoid this what can be done is that we have to minimize the changes in the interior of the person, where the person is living, we have to minimize the Changes. We cannot uh, make uh, changes in the interiors, and uh, uh, we have to illuminate the light, bright light everywhere to avoid the accidents. And even do not allow the patient to take the medications alone. Take the medications alone. That is also a cause of accidents. So we have to help him to take the medications. Then fluid management. So nothing much uh, special is needed for the dementia patient. Fluid is like normal people only what they need. Only thing is that uh, we have uh, to uh, give them sufficient fluid during the daytime. Uh, we have to give them sufficient uh, during the daytime. That is uh, before the 6 p.m. Before the 6 p.m. Whatever amount you wanted to give to the patient uh, to avoid unnecessary disturbance during the night time. So this is. Uh, what uh, about the fluid management? Then the mood and emotions. How do we uh, how do we manage this mood and emotion? Mood and emotions are common in the patient with dementia. And here uh, the best thing is like that we have to maintain a calm environment for the patient. As the patient is depressed, anxious, and all, to maintain a calm environment uh, with a fixed daily routine and. Uh, uh, we have we should not give any too many choices for the patient as he is not cap capable of taking his uh, decisions properly and uh, in uh, in case uh, again we can like here we can see that uh, some uh, interesting activities like uh, playing the guitar playing the music and all can be done to uh, make his uh, mood change okay then wandering wandering is uh, here, another important thing uh, which can be seen in the second stage. So, here what we can do to prevent wandering is if the person gets lost in any of the surrounding environment, uh, always the patient should have the identification uh, bracelet. Identification bracelet or he should have uh, uh, any of uh, the identity card in his pocket and all. If he get lost in the surrounding environment, anyone can bring him back to his home or even he can take the help of the pet. Now an even friend is that the pet are trained, trained in such a way that it will take care of that dementia patient if the patient 
loss in the surrounding environment then disturb sleep so better the disturb sleep can be better avoided by uh, avoiding the napping within the day time and give uh, and uh, giving uh, the warm wind uh, before going to the bed and all, all these things we can do to prevent the disturbance of the sleep and then interpersonal relationship how do we take care of interpersonal relationship as the person person is uh, as isolated from the society so these things can be done like verbal communication verbal communication should be always clear and simple because communication the person will not be able to understand what is said by uh, the other so uh, clear and unhurried communication and uh, questioning like we yes or no are the best for the patients and uh, uh, then we have to focus on the things than on the mistakes what uh, we have to focus on the strength of the patient rather than the weaknesses and uh, something interesting throughout the day uh, or involve him with some old friends and all this is how we can improve the interpersonal relationship of the uh, patients and the last thing is about the delusion and hallucination as i said some uh, 40 to 50 percentage of the patient they do suffer from hallucination and delusion for this accept the patient as we say accept the patient but don't accept his hallucinations and delusions and uh, even at that the same time we cannot deny also the hallucination and delusion we can give proper answer to that okay uh, that hallucination and delusions we can defend that and then reassurance can be given to the patient and uh, better if the hallucinations and delusions are out of control uh, always involve a family member whenever we are dealing with such a patient with suspiciousness and all take care of, uh, take the help of the family members and uh, take him to the psychiatrist so this is all uh, this is about the dementia so we are till now we have seen about what is the dementia so it is a uh, disorder which comes from under organic brain syndrome the definition of dementia what are the causes of dementia stages of dementia and uh, how we can uh, diagnose a patient with the dementia then we have seen about the management of dementia and the nursing care means the total care we have to give to the patient with the uh, dementia total care we have to give so this is all about the uh, topic for dementia if anyone is having any doubt they can ask